Hey everyone, Sebastian here from Green Music Productions and today we're taking a look at the brand new RX-11 from Isotope. If you like that kind of content, please click the like button and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Now let's dive right in. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I made a video about a plugin called Clear. It used to be called Goyo by a company called Supertone and it did an amazing job at removing the background noises and the reverb from dialogues or vocal tracks. And in that review, I said that it was doing a way better job than RX-10. But of course, Isotope released RX-11 with a similar tool that is integrated into your DAW where you can remove reverb and background noises in real time. So I thought it would be a perfect time to compare those tools. Plus stay until the end because I have here another secret tool that is actually free to use and we'll be able to compare if it's doing a better job than both Clear and RX. In my video, I had three samples. Uh, if you haven't watched that video, I can leave a link to that video in the comments comments below, so make sure you check it out. So I basically reopened the same session where I have some recording of my own. So let's listen to those recording without any processing. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, test, test. So this one doesn't have a lot of reverb, but it has a lot of background noises. It was recorded right beside my furnace. One, two, three, check, check, one, two, three. This one has a natural room reverb. Hello, hello. Um, this is a test. And this one has a lot of sporadic noises. I was tapping on myself just to see how good it would end all those uh, little noises that are not necessarily room tone. Let's listen to clear. I'll toggle it on and off on the first track here. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, test, test, test. One. Three, one, two, three, test. So it's doing a great job. Now this is what the RX-11 module looks like. It's called Dialog Isolate. Uh, what's really good about it is you have four bands if you need it. When, when you open it, it will most likely look like this, but you can open plugin like this and open up the four band section. You can move around the different frequencies if you want, uh, but what's great is it's super simple to use again. You have a voice slider, reverb and noise, just like in clear. You have a sensitivity and a quality. So for it to work well in real time, I have a pretty powerful computer and I have to select good real time because best offline would lag. So uh, let's try to just remove the noise as much as possible on this first track here. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, test, test, test. So I'm not cutting off all the reverb because there's not much reverb in this. Let's just reset the reverb and only focus on the noise. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, test, test, test. So it's cutting out the ending of the test so it doesn't like sibilance that much. Let's try to increase the sensitivity and see uh, what it does. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, test, test, test. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, test, test. So not much difference here. Um, let's compare it with clear now. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, test, test. So right now, clear the settings that I have, it's just basically solo on voice. So it's removing all the ambience and the reverb. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right. one, two, three. test, test, clear. test. Wow, I feel like Clear is doing a way better job in real time, at least. Uh, if we toggle to best offline, this is the best algorithm, but as I said, it might lag a little bit. Let's try it out. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, two three, test, test. So yeah, I feel like the best is pretty close to clear. Let's listen to clear again. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, test, test. Clear might be a tiny bit better, even with the best quality. Uh, I would probably apply it offline on the file itself and not use it in real time. 
It's really close to clear when you set it to best offline, but clear is just so smooth, no lag, no anything. So if you already have RX 10 and you're willing to upgrade to RX 11, I guess it's a really good thing that they added this. But if you're looking for the best tool to isolate the vocals, I feel like clear is doing a better job, especially in real time. Now let's take a look at this track here. It's the same files. I actually used the later files. So let's listen to it first. One, two, three, check, check, one. So this one has a bit of reverb. Let's listen to what this mysterious tool did. One, two, three, one, two, three, check, check, one, two, three, one, two, three. That is pretty insane. Let's listen to the third track without any processing first. Hello. Um, this is a test for clear. So a little background noise, uh, a bunch of tapping and a little bit of reverb. Let's listen to this. Hello, hello. Um, this is a test for clear. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So let's compare it with clear just for fun. Hello, hello. Um, this is a test for Clear. One, two, three, one, two. So as you can see, it sounds uh, really good. It has artifacts um, and I actually used Adobe Podcast Beta. It's free to use right now. There are limitations, but you basically upload a file in there. It will process it and you can download it. So the limitations are you can only do max 30 minutes, 500 megabyte per file and an hour uh, daily. So basically if you upload like six, 10 minutes files, that's the limit that you can do or one big one hour file. It's the limit. It is pretty good. And since it's still in beta, I feel like it's going to be free to use for a little while. There's obviously a pro feature, but honestly to use it for free is great. It's doing a really good job, especially for people that are not that technical podcasters or other people that don't want to mess with buying specific plugins like RX or clear, or, you know, they just want their file to sound better. But I think it's using resynthesis because it's adding artifacts, but it sounds basically like it was recorded in a studio. Hello, hello. Um, so you can test it for free. I think you have to create an account and apply for the beta, but it's pretty good. Uh, make sure to check it out. Now let's take a look at the rest of RX because they also added a bunch of features on the tool itself. One of the things that they improved on is called dialogue contour. And it's actually really fun to use uh, because you can obviously change the format, the pitch, which is really good on dialogue, obviously, but you can also increase the variation in tonality or decrease it. So make it more flat or make it more expressive. Let's try to select a portion uh, like this and let's listen to it. Some kind of weird tradition. Their house was like something you would see in your nightmares. And the first some kind of weird tradition. Their house was like something you would see in your nightmares. And the so first let's play around with the pitch and the format just so you can see what it does. Some kind of weird tradition their house was like something you would see in your nightmares and the first kind of weird tradition a house was like something you would see in your nightmares and the first so pretty standard pretty straightforward but now let's lower the variation the kind of weird tradition their house was like something you would see in your nightmares and so it's not fluctuating as much in pitch. You can see the curve up here. So let's lower it even more so it sounds even flatter in pitch. Some kind of weird tradition. Their house was like something you would see in your nightmares. And you can do the opposite. You can make it more expressive. So let's raise it at about plus 50%. Some kind of weird tradition. Their house was like something you would see in your nightmares. And That's cool. Let's put it to 100 just to see what it does. Some kind of weird tradition their house was like something you would see in your nightmares and that's pretty cool and um another thing that you can do with this tool is just edit it manually by creating dots and making curves basically let's try to focus on the last word here and let's create a dot here and try to pitch it up as much as possible towards the end right now it's going down but let's see what this does some kind of weird tradition their house was like something you would see in your nightmares and the first 
That sounds natural. Uh, so if you want, let's say, to have the ending of a phrase to go up or instead of down or vice versa, you can easily edit it in this tool. So that's pretty cool. Another thing that they improved on is the music rebalance. Again, there are many tools that can do that. There are even free tools that are not that easy to use, but that you can download online for that. I've tested a bunch myself, but let's give it a shot. Now I have a track here. Let's listen to it a little bit. That you would leave me all around You don't seem to mind that it's so hot inside Okay, cool. So now let's play around with this. Uh, we have a sensitivity knob and you also have volumes for vocal, bass, drums, and others. And we have different quality here. Again, I feel like if you put best, it's probably going to be laggy. Uh, let's try better first and preview it. And let's... Um, Remove the bass. Right now it's taking about five seconds for the adjustment to be taken into consideration when previewing at least. Uh, maybe working offline is better. Let's try to reduce the drums a little bit. Stay up all night until the sun comes up I'm still trying to figure out what you are up to Cause you change your mind almost every time that I try to get closer but I don't plan to give up Yeah, it's pretty good, but I've seen better options online. Let's try the best quality and see how well it does. So let's just isolate the vocal. Yeah, I think it's not amazing. Uh, it might be good if you just want to tweak some volumes a little bit, like if I wanted to lower the bass or the drum or something like that. It's doing a pretty good job. But there's also another feature called Stem Split. And I already did it. You press it. If you set it to the best quality, in my case, with the computer that I have, it took about three minutes to extract the stems. So it extracted a vocal, bass, percussion, and other instrument stem. Let's listen to the vocals isolated. We'll rock this club, we'll rock this down. They never thought that you would lead me all around. You don't seem to mind that it's so hot inside. You move like it's the only thing that can keep you alive. <laughs> the way you are. Ah, uh, again, it's okay, but it's not amazing. Let's try the bass. This is pretty bad. Um, it might be better on other types of music, but for now, that's what I have and that's what I throw at it, so. The drum is pretty good, though. Let's listen to other instruments. That's okay, that's pretty good as well. It's basically guitars and synth in this case, so uh, not a lot happening. Yeah, and the verses, it's basically just a synth. So yeah, it's doing a pretty good job. It's not the best that I've seen, but it's cool to have that option inside of RX. It's doing a better job than RX-10, that's for sure. There's also a new tool called Loudness Optimize, and it is not so easy to understand at first, but it's a good way to normalize, let's say, dialogue or something, especially if you're mixing dialogue on a very long video or podcast. At some point, you kind of lose track, even if you have a meter. So this is pretty good. Basically, this is the LUFS gate. Usually when they calculate LUFS, they use a gate for everything that that is under minus 30 so that it's not considered in the calculation of the final LUFS. But this is really useful. Let's say you want to play around, set a threshold, 
and you can set a boost value and a ratio. The speed, usually I don't mess around too much with the speed unless it sounds unnatural. But what's really cool is you can just click on learn and it will give you some specific settings to use. In this case, it basically said that it's good enough since there's not a lot under the 30 and the loudness is pretty good. But yeah, it's a pretty good thing to have. And the last thing I want to talk about is that there is now a mid side mode inside of RX. So instead of seeing the left and the right here, if we enable the mid side mode instead, we'll see the side and the mid. In this case, this is a mono track. So instead of using the dialogue, let's go to the music track again and we can see the mid content and the side content. So if I select just the mid, we can listen to what's in the mid and we can listen to what's just on the sides or both. And we can process just the sides or the mids like that. This is really cool to have. I don't know why it wasn't integrated into RX way before that. That's it for today for me. If you like that kind of stuff, please click the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.